Hey guys, what's up? It's Jules here for What Culture, and I've got a little treat for you. I'm going to start a new little series detailing clones and bootlegs of other video games. Some good, some very, very, very bad. And today, I want to talk to you guys about stealth. Sad though it may be, the stealth genre is pretty much non-existent in gaming right now. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a few notable titles out there, but I'm talking about right now. And now the likes of Splinter Cell and the Hitman reboot have come and gone, plus Metal Gear is ditch sneaking for poking zombies in the head with sticks for some reason, there's not really an iconic franchise leading the pack. Therefore, when Alakine's Gun was announced back in 2016 and promised to be a revitalization of the stealth genre, a lot of eyes were turned towards it. The developers Maximum Games promised a spiritual successor to the likes of Hitman, and when images of the game came out, everything did seem to be lining up pretty well. And until it was actually released. When it came out, it was clear that this game wasn't a spiritual successor, it was more of a possession of a f***ing corpse. If imitation is meant to be the sincerest form of flattery, then this was just basically stealing somebody's clothes and leaving them naked in a car park. What I'm trying to say is Big Al's Pistol Shack is imitation in the worst way possible. The game sits as one of the lowest ranked games of 2016 and handles stealth about as well as trying to sneak wearing iron armor. And it's a shame because the premise that's there is actually very interesting. Set during the height of the Cold War, you're shown the backstage conniving through the eyes of a KGB assassin. But the game does nothing with it and somehow makes being a covert agent seem really, really boring. And that is a crime. The story is convoluted and stop-start, and not once do you care for the character. Now, Agent 47 was pretty dry, but what bolstered his expressionless persona was outstanding gameplay. Not so here, as this was about as polished as a f***ing muddy shoe. The enemies possessed the peripheral vision of a blinkered mare, amnesia that would make Jason born blush, and the accuracy of a stormtrooper who just hit his head coming out on top of the thing. You know, you know the clip I'm talking about. It's a joke to play through and ends up being a battle between the player and the numerous glitches that will hound them throughout. If you can make it through a f***ing level without falling through the goddamn floor, then I commend you. I couldn't. And it's such a shame as the world is crying out for a new stealth-centric game in the same vein as the Splinter Cell titles. I mean, we get it in some form in the likes of Batman and Assassin's Creed, but I'm talking about a real stealth title. This game could have been the step, it could have been the shot in the arm that the genre needed, yet it feels like a game that's actually 10 years older than it actually is, with all the best bits of it just basically being cliff notes of Hitman. It's a hilarious tragedy, but one that serves to weaken the pool overall. IO alone cannot bear the burden, even if Hitman continues to go from strength to strength. Basically what I'm saying is Snake, Sam, anyone, please come back and lead the stealth genre. Please? And that's my tiny tirade. Let me know down in the comments section below what you thought about it, as well as any other clones or bootleg titles you'd like me to check out. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below, and if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though, but it might be.